So today we're looking at permafrost affected soils. We are just southeast of the city of Whitehorse in Yukon Territory and we're in the Wolf Creek drainage, uh, drainage basin or the, the area generally fed uh, that feeds into Wolf Creek which is a, a commonly used research area for a lot of people that are working in in the alpine tundra. Uh, there is an international tundra experiment uh, station area set up just upslope from here and today we're here to look at soils that are affected by primarily by their climate, so by the cold, uh, the cold climate. In terms of the overall ecoregion that we're in, we're in the northern boreal cordillera, or uh, more specifically we can refer to this as the, uh, the Yukon Southern Lakes ecoregion. And so the characteristics of this ecoregion, it's uh, overall this ecoregion lies in, uh, in the southern part of the Yukon, uh, the Yukon territory, and some of the characteristics of it are uh, it's dry, relatively dry climate. It's in the rain shadow of the Coast Mountains, the St. Elias Mountains, uh, that are just to lie between here and uh, the Pacific Ocean. And so it tends to be fairly dry on the order of somewhere between 200 to 300 millimeters of precipitation per year. And so of that precipitation, about one half to a third of it falls as, uh, as rainfall in the summer months, the remainder falling, uh, falling as snow. So that relatively dry climate contributes to, the, to the, the vegetation that we see here. Now, right in this particular location where we are, we are in a, a, in a, a, a higher altitude region of the, of the northern boreal cordillera. And so what we're looking at is uh, basically an alpine tundra system. So in terms of the vegetation at this elevation, we've got a lot of uh, dwarf birch, so a lot of low-lying birch species around here. We've got some salix species, some dryas. There are some, uh, some, some low shrubby willow around here, a few grass species, and then a whole range of uh, lichens as well. And so what we can uh, uh, what we can determine by looking at the vegetation, we get a sense of just how, uh, how extreme the climate is, that it's not terribly conducive to, uh, to the development of large trees as we would see throughout much of the, the, the region. If we get lower down into the, into the broader valleys of this, of this region, we would see a lot of the boreal forest species, so black spruce, white spruce, uh, jack pine being the, the dominant ones, particularly white spruce and jack pine, uh, with the odd pocket of black spruce here and there. Uh, but overall, this, that, that, these, this would be the, the major characteristics of this. In terms of the, um, uh, the parent material that we're looking at here, we're, we're dealing primarily right here with uh, a glacial till parent material. So much as we've seen in uh, some of the other soils that we're looking at, the glacial till parent material is the, the material that was deposited uh, by, the, by the melting glaciers. As a it hasn't been reworked in the same way that a glacial fluvial or a glacial lacustre material would be, and so it's actually uh, tends to be a, a fairly poorly sorted matrix. So a lot of uh, stones mixed together with the with uh, sands and and finer finer fractions. Um, overall, in terms of uh, how we could tell that this is our parent material, uh, well, when, when we go to when it comes time to actually look at the soil, certainly the, the poorly sorted matrix is a is a dead giveaway. Um, the the generally hummocky topography around here is another indication of that that's what we have. Uh, this landscape, there's actually quite a bit of evidence of thermokarst as well in terms of. Uh, uh, areas where we can see that there's been large chunks of ground ice that have actually melted away, leaving these small uh, depressions, stone fill depressions, uh, throughout the landscape. And so, so you're walking along and all of a sudden the land just sort of drops away and there's a, a, a sort of a big crater there. And that's where that uh, basically a big chunk of ice has melted away, uh, leaving that behind.